Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Before we jump in, it is Andrew's 25th birthday, the day you are watching this. So spam the comments with happy birthday for him and I'll pass the comments along. Let's get into this week's Mental Monday. part of the disorder series I had been doing. I kind of put it on pause because it started feeling really dry and I just kind of felt like moving on for a bit. And now I've kind of become revigorated for it again. I've been thinking of a few of them that I didn't get to hit on that I'm actually super interested in and would love the opportunity to look into further, to discuss more, and to kind of just explore in that way and do videos on. So the first one that I realized I had not talked about that is probably one of the most common was learning disabilities or a learning disorder. I know I've talked about with Turner Syndrome that you can have what's called NVLD, which is nonverbal learning disorder, and that connects to having trouble with math. I, I never really felt like I had a learning disorder. I never felt like I was that hindered in that way. It was just a major struggle for me and it was only math. So it never stuck out to me that much as far as a learning capability. It more just really frustrated me with math. That was my arch enemy for my whole life from discovering it in school to this day. I'm dreading the statistics class that I have to take still for my master's program because it's math. I know it is not the most intense of learning disorders or learning tr struggles, troubles, I don't even know. It's not the most hindering or the most gut-wrenching, but it has truly felt like a huge struggle for me because it might as well be learning a whole other language for as much sense as it makes to me and that is hard. The thing about learning disorders or learning disabilities, whichever word you want to use, is kind of the internal struggle with telling others more so than anything else. A learning disorder shows up in ways that you can't deny. When you're in school and you're not doing well and others ask you how you did, they wanna show you how they did and they wanna compare and you did not do as well, that can be embarrassing. That can be a struggle to even wanna try because it's so hard and it's such a struggle. There are a lot of different types of learning disabilities or learning disorders. According to learningallied.org, there are seven main types of learning disorders. There's dyslexia, which is a problem being able to read, recognizing, or decoding print. Some of those signs are reading slowly, difficulty with basic letter sounds, trouble decoding or ordering the letters, the ordering of the letters get mixed up, and not being able to recall known words. The second is dysgraphia, which is a writing-based learning disorder. That means a child may not be able to process their own thoughts enough to put them on paper. It says they struggle with writing complete and grammatically correct sentences and often have poor handwriting. Some of those signs are awkward pencil gripping, illegible handwriting, frustration with writing thoughts on paper, and can talk about an idea but cannot write it down on paper. So they're verbal, but they have trouble actually writing things out, even beyond the mechanical functionality of writing. So the next one that I probably fall into is dyscalculia. Dis 
Helkilia. Yeah, which is a math-based disorder that says it results in your child having trouble recognizing numbers and symbols and understanding basic math concepts. For older students, they often have issues related to reasoning. So the signs are difficulty recalling number sequences, may mistake numbers that look similar in shape, cannot retain patterns when adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, and difficulty with handling money or estimating cost. So I might be somewhere on that scale. I'd have to look into it more. Some of that I definitely don't have. And others, I kind of have a variation of where it's more using the abstract mathematical concepts and some of the formulas just look like gibberish to me. So it's more like that for me, but that is that was a really interesting find on the website. The next one is a central auditory process disorder. So it's auditory based. And it says it means a child has difficulty processing information he or she hears and interpreting speech. So the signs are distracted by background noises, has difficulty following directions, misspells or mispronounces similar sounding words, and has trouble following conversations. So that would be something that would be majorly impactful in school when you're trying to pay attention for longer periods of time in class, instead of little spurts where you're listening to somebody talk, that would be very, very difficult. The next one is nonverbal learning disorders. They can be very difficult to diagnose as children who have it are often very articulate and do well academically, but they lack motor coordination, common social skills, and interpreting nonverbal communication. So the signs of it are, it does not perceive nonverbal cues such as facial expressions, can be very disruptive in conversation, asking too many questions, poor fine and gross motor skills, and has difficulty dealing with change. I personally love and hate change, depending on what the change is, but I get excited at change. I don't like to stay stagnant, it's a little bit of a vice for me. But I definitely have found myself not always able to interpret body language, <laughs> not always able to interpret facial expressions all the time, not huge difficulties. Um, I, I don't think I have difficulty with social skills at all. I've never had trouble making friends or anything like that. But. This was very interesting. It does give very good detail on what I've also read about it in connection to Turner syndrome. So the next one is called the visual processing disorder. And this says the child cannot receive, process, sequence, recall, or express information in an accurate and timely way. The signs are often mistakes, letters, and numbers that look similar in shape. So they misread words. Remembering the spelling of familiar words incorrectly, cannot copy words accurately, spacing letters or words poorly, writing outside lines, margins, and loses place while reading, cannot find numbers or details on a page easily. The last group, they kind of grouped a few together because there are different variations of the same kind of disorder. So they're aphasia, dysphasia, or global aphasia, and it's language-based disorders. They have a hard time expressing themselves using words as well as understanding spoken or written language, and the common signs are difficulty expressing thoughts verbally, poor reading comprehension, frustrated when speaking, and having trouble labeling objects. And then it gives wonderful steps to help address issues if you are dealing with one or if you have a child that you think might be dealing with one, that can be important to have. So I really enjoyed learning a little more about this. I want to expand my horizon on the spectrum of disorders and kind of the details of them. So this was a really fun one that I've never actually delved that far into. So I really enjoyed this. I hope this helped you in some way. I hope it was informational. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. I do videos every day and Mondays are Mental Mondays. If you are not already subscribed, 
click the screen and subscribe so then you can see when the next video comes out. And don't forget to leave Andrew a happy birthday comment and I will show him. Be sure to share this video with everybody and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.